Okay. So welcome to our discussion about nothing but nets. Um, tonight we're going to do just a brief overview of the toolkit. So all of this information that we're going over tonight can actually be found on the Advocacy Toolkit, which is located on our website um, under usjc.org. Um, you can go under our um, document section and down under programs is this whole toolkit. And I've kind of added some stuff and some information regarding nothing but nuts as well. So let's go ahead and get started. What is Buzzkill 2014? Well, in 2008, we partnered um, through the United Nations Foundation Nothing But Nuts campaign. And basically, this came about because they uh, approached us at our um, leadership summit or global summit, as we call it, in New York, um, where we work specifically with the United Nations. Um, the Nothing But Nuts uh, group was there, and they approached us and talked to us about raising awareness about malaria. Um, it fell under our UN Millennium Goals, so we thought this was a perfect partnership. Um, JCI partnered with them in 2008, and um, they, of course, passed the information to all of the countries in 2008, and we started getting more involved at the end of 2011, beginning of 2012. In 2012, we heavily participated, promoting the program throughout the U.S. and talking about the importance of advocacy. And we'll get a little bit more into advocacy later, but the big important thing for the U.S. is that we're actually the country who can go to our government officials and have conversations about the Global Fund and the President's Malaria Initiative. So it was really important that we got involved in the advocacy piece. Um, but through advocacy fundraising and awareness raising, the USJCs are working together to end malaria in our generation. Um, we have worked with them since 2008, and as JCI International um, us included, we've raised over a million dollars for them. Um, I think closer to three million actually we figured out this year. And um, we are continuing to work and continuing to raise awareness and fundraising and um, the advocacy piece as well. How do we save lives? First thing is advocacy. Um, we mobilized the USJCs and citizens across America to encourage our U.S. members of Congress to support and robustly fund malaria prevention programs worldwide. So continuing um, to promote the President's Malaria Initiative and the Global Fund, pushing that advocacy piece forward and how important it is to be involved. Um, by fundraising, you can donate just $10 per member. The USJCs can raise $180,000 by the end of 2014 if every one of our members donated $10. And then the awareness piece. We can raise awareness among JCs and across the U.S. about what we can do to end malaria deaths. Why is it important? Um, malaria is a disease that's transmitted by a simple mosquito bite and it kills a child every 60 seconds. The wonderful news that we've received is that when we first started this campaign back in 2008, a child was dying every 30 seconds. So from the monies that have been collected and the nets that have been provided, we've raised that to 60 seconds. Um, one simple thing can stop that would be an insecticide treated bed net and it can save lives. Each net protects the family for several years. Um, they've actually found the life of a net to be about three years, and it will cover um, a large bed so a family of four can sleep under one net. The net costs just $10, and that $10 is not just to purchase the net. That actually is to purchase the net, to ship the nets, to deliver the nets, and to educate the individuals that are getting the nets on how to use them properly. By raising funds and awareness and asking the U.S. government to support malaria prevention worldwide, we can end malaria deaths and work toward eradication in our generation. A little bit about Nothing But Nuts. They are a global grassroots campaign to raise awareness and funding for malaria. Um, they are heavily funded by the uh, Gates Foundation. They fall under the blanket of the United Nations, so they work in with the United Nations. And malaria is the leading cause of death among children, and it's in Africa, but we've also found in, in Central and South America it's becoming a huge problem as well. <coughs> Nothing but nuts provides everyone, students, CEOs, bishops to basketball players, the opportunity to join the fight against malaria. Um, they do have wonderful partners, which we'll discuss some of them later. 
that have gotten heavily involved in working with nothing but nets. Again, it just takes $10 to send a net and save a life. Thanks to the generosity of supporters and partners, Nothing But Nets has distributed over 7 million life-saving bed nets. Um, so that's with all of their partners combined. They've delivered over 7 million bed nets. Rick Riley's column um, in Sports Illustrated challenged his readers to donate at least $10 to send anti-malaria bed nets. And that led to the creation of Nothing But Nuts campaign, which started in 2006. And like I mentioned, JCI came involved in 2008, and we started getting heavily involved end of 2011, beginning of 2012. Over the years, Nothing But Nuts campaign has engaged hundreds of thousands of individuals to achieve the Millennium Development Goal to end malaria deaths by 2015. Um, they do work with a diverse group of partners, including, they listed some here, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Junior Chamber International, they work with National Basketball Association, NBA Cares, the People of the United Methodist Church, Major League Soccer. Um, they work with a um, the Jewish Coalition Group. They work with WNBA, um, Major League Baseball teams. They work with um, the WWE Superstars. Um, the Divas have traveled over and participated in events over there. Um, so just several groups that have come on board. Um, ExxonMobil is a big supporter of theirs as well, so those are some great partners that they have that they work with. And if you go to that link, you can open it and you can see all of the partners that they work with. Malaria 101. Malaria is a disease caused by a blood parasite. Um, we talked about transmitted through mosquitoes. Um, Malaria, or bad air, causes 200 million illnesses per year and kills more than 600,000 people, mostly children under the age of five. As we mentioned, every 60 seconds a child dies in Africa from a malaria infection. 40% of the world's population lives in malaria endemic countries, and its treatment consumes nearly 40% of those countries' public health resources. Um, the really cool thing about Nothing But Nuts and what they do is that they actually spend a lot of time and their resources going into the refugee camps and visiting those folks that would not normally come in for that public assistance and health care. Deaths cost Africa approximately $12 million a year of lost in productivity. So how as people say, well, how is this affecting the U.S.? This is a big thing right there. Anything that we purchase from them, when someone gets sick and productivity is down, that means they still get produced and we don't get those things over here. So that is definitely one reason that malaria is affecting the U.S., whether it's here as an epidemic or not. Um, as we talked about, malaria is preventable and treatable. Um, it remains one of the deadliest diseases in Africa. Um, infections um, can be prevented either by spraying insecticide indoors or by sleeping under the bed net. Additionally, people take anti-malaria drugs um, and a combination of therapies to treat malaria once it's been contacted. Um, the biggest problem with it, once it's been contacted, is that people don't really know that it's malaria. It comes on like flu-type symptoms. People feel like they're just, you know, getting the flu, they're not feeling very well, and they wait until it gets to that point that it's untreatable before they go in to actually see someone. Long-lasting insecticide-treated bed nets, as we talked about, the bed nets actually last three years um, before the outside insecticide starts getting a little rubbery and they have to be replaced. So some of the bed nets that were delivered back in 2011 are now getting to that point where they need to be replaced. Um, so we're having to go back into those same areas and replace those nets. Although $10 for a bed net may not sound like much, the cost to make them um, to reach most of the people at risk from malaria, many of who survive on less than $1.50 a day. So for them to purchase a bed net would be a huge deal, and that's a lot of money to them. According to the 2011 World Malaria Report, 96% of people who had access to a bed net use it. They're simple, they're life-saving, and we need to provide them to those in need. Um, to participate in a fundraising program, you can go to nothingbutnets.net um, backslash donate, and um, there is information on there how to participate in programs. So we'll talk some more about fundraising in a little bit. But malaria rates have plummeted by more than one-third in the past decade. How do we help eliminate malaria? First big thing is use your voice. Write a letter, make a phone call, use social media to share why you're a champion in the fight against malaria with your members of Congress. Visit your U.S. Senator or Representative. 
Um, as a chapter, as a member, you can visit the in-district office of your U.S. Senator or Representative to encourage them to support the President's Malaria Initiative and Global Fund to fight AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria, and ask them to join the Malaria Caucus. Um, so there is a caucus for both the Senate and the Congress side, and um, they can reach out to the individuals who are chairing that caucus and ask to participate in that caucus. You can donate $10. So raising $10 for each member of your JC chapter will ensure that we reach was $200,000 last year, $180,000 this year. Host a local chapter or community fundraiser. Get your entire chapter or community involved in a fight against malaria. Spread the buzz. Raise awareness and share what you're doing to send that and save lives across so social media. Share a tweet, post a video, write a blog. The sky is the limit. And get your friends involved. Make your friends, family, coworkers, neighbors, anyone and everyone aware of how important their voice and their actions are in the fight against malaria. Get them involved in fundraising, advocacy, and awareness raising as well. And another piece to the advocacy is that we do have advocacy cards, whether they be online or if one, your state president has some to circulate in paper. And we are asking people to fill those cards out because they get hand delivered to your senators and congressmen um, on Capitol Hill, telling them why it's important to continue the funding for the President's Malaria Initiative and the Global Fund. Advocacy. The U.S. government plays a critical leadership role in preventing malaria. We have elected our U.S. officials, we support their work and encourage them um, to fund the life-saving programs like PMI and the Global Fund. With strong leadership and funding, we can end malaria deaths and work towards malaria eradication. And the big thing that we found when we were doing our trip last year is that we were unaware that the U.S. supports one-third of the Global Fund. So if we decrease our funding, every other country has to decrease their funding as well. And that money goes to fight AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. JCs do believe in the order to create positive, lasting change. We must improve ourselves and the world around us. By participating in advocacy, you're joining a movement of champions around the U.S. who are working to improve the world and support American efforts to save lives. As constituents, leaders, and advocates, we have the power to educate and urge our members of Congress to do their part in the fight. Why is it important? Um, we've made great progress in the fight against malaria, and like they mentioned, through the generosity of supporters and partners um, like JCI, they've distributed over 7 million life-saving bed nets. And this was last year, and I know last year alone JCI raised over $650,000. So I'm sure that goal is up to $8 million at this point um, once the tallying gets done for 2013. In order to sustain the gains we've made and continue to make progress, because like I mentioned, the nets need to be replaced every three years. So continue to do this. Um, we have to continue to ask for the money from the President's Malaria Initiative and the Global Fund. And you have to let your elected official know that we want them to support these important programs and fight for funding. Um, just a little bit about PMI and the Global Fund. Um, PMI was established in 2005 by President George Bush. And it's the President's Malaria Initiative supports proven prevention and treatment methods and has been distributed more than 62 million insecticide-treated bed nets. Um, you can read about PMI at PMI.gov. And the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria, since its creation in 2002, the Global Fund has distributed more than 200 million insecticide-treated nets to protect families from malaria. It plays a critical role in raising money from local governments, the private sector, and non-governmental organizations to stop the spread of HIV, AIDS, TB, and malaria. And you can read more about the Global Fund at theglobalfund.org backslash EN. How to engage your members of Congress. A big one is calling them. Um, you can actually call the U.S. Capitol switchboard um, and, and ask to speak to your congressman. Um, they also have staff answering the phone calls, letters, and emails. So you can email, you can send a, a handwritten letter, uh, but you can also um, do that at your district office. And your um, member of Congress does visit your district office, so you can set up times to speak with them there. You can fill out an advocacy card, as we mentioned before. Um, those advocacy cards do get delivered to Capitol Hill. We delivered them last year. Um, there is some in the appendix that says of the um, of the toolkit, so you can go right to the toolkit and print them out yourself. Or if you want hard copies, we can mail them to you from Nothing But Nets. Um, you can write a letter to your member of Congress, so um, asking them to join the Malaria Caucus, asking them to continue to fully fund the President's Malaria Initiative and Global Fund, um, and why the program is important to you. 
you can schedule a meeting to speak with them. And when we do our buzz tour, that's been the biggest thing is that we've been scheduling those meetings to meet with all of those members of Congress and participating with them in their district offices. And um, if you're attending Baltimore, we actually have a day on the Hill that we've scheduled there on um, that Tuesday before the convention starts. Um, or we will have currently about 50 people going and talking to their congressmen and senators on the Hill and speaking to them about not only nothing but nuts, but also the importance of being engaged and being uh, citizens who create positive change and how we can assist with things that they have going on outside of nothing but nuts. You can also invite your member of Congress to an event. Um, anything that you have going on is very important to them, so having them there is wonderful. And as we always mention, you are a constituent and a voter, um, so what you're thinking about matters. So putting something together and having them attend to show them that you're engaged citizens and why it's important to you. Um, how to call a member of Congress. When you're calling an office, uh, make sure you're doing it in the most effective and quick way to ensure that they learn what's important to you and the staff answers the phone calls, letters, and emails and gets that information to them. Um, answer why you're calling, the purpose of the call, how important it is to you, why you need to speak to someone. Um, when you call as a constituent, um, you know, talk about how you support malaria prevention, the PMI and Global Fund. Help your member of Congress understand why you're passionate about the issue. Ask them if they're a member of the Malaria Caucus. Thank them if they are. If not, urge them to join. And we also have um, some advocacy talking points that you can use on Nothing But Nets. Um, and also in this toolkit, there is some information that you can use for talking points. Um, how do you write your members of Congress? Of course, tell them why you're writing. Make the ask of what you have, you know, why it's important to continue PMI and Global Fund. Um, state who you are, so your credentials, what your occupation is, that you're JC, that you support nothing but nets, explain the campaign. Um, use the talking points in the guide. Personalize your message, so tell your story and why you became passionate about it, and then close by restating the ask. Um, it mentions here the best letters are personalized, courteous to the point, and include specific supportive examples. Um, your letter should not be more than one page, and it's very important that it's concise and just that one page because a lot of times they're skimming because um, the staff is what's going through the letters and forwarding those on, and if it's not concise, they're not going to read the full thing and it won't get where it needs to be going. Um, what to say? The top three statements that resonate most is that every 60 seconds a child in Africa dies from malaria. Malaria is easily prevented through the use of a simple bed net, and investments in the PMI and the Global Fund show proven results. Um, tell them why you're writing, share your story, and then again, of course, make the ask of them continuing to keep that funding going and also if they would participate in the Malaria Caucus. Fundraising. Fundraising is um, a very intricate part of, of the um, operation, of course, because we do need the $10 to purchase the nets, to send the nets. Um, so set a goal. Um, you can set a personal goal if you'd like to. You can set a goal with your chapter. Um, we have, um, we are working to create Team Razor page. So we will be using the Team Razor site. Um, last year we used a, a site called CrowdRise and now nothing but nets has slipped over to this Team Razor site. So we'll be going in and creating pages for each of the states. And then as a member of that state, you can go in and make yourself a team member or you can make your chapter a team member, however you want to do it, and um, put your goals on there as well. You can host a fundraiser. So use your own networks as a starting place. Um, if you know somebody who owns a restaurant, you can ask them to donate space and have a dinner. If you have athletes in your area, you can do basketball shootout, three on three, soccer tournament, have people donate to participate in the event. Usually $10 to participate gets you a net for each person. Um, we have lots of resources and lots of ideas. I do have some more fundraising stuff in here as well. Um, but just any item, any idea that you can think of is wonderful. It mentions on here being creative. When we were participating in the Buzz Tour last year, we attended events like a rock, paper, scissor tournament. So any idea that comes to your mind that gets people excited and wants to make them come out and participate um, will allow you to raise money. And of course, don't be afraid to ask for help. The best way to get someone to donate is to ask. The same goes for volunteers, for materials, for any assistance that you may need. And the worst thing that somebody can say is no, and then you just move on to someone else. 
Um, getting inspired, um, here's some ideas that we've used for fundraisers in the past. Um, hosting a run or walk, um, JC's in Brainerd, Minnesota incorporated nothing but nuts to their annual health expo and 5K run and walk and raised more than $7,000 in 2012 for bed nuts. Um, selling an item, JCI members in North Miami sold specially branded teddy bears at their events and raised nearly $1,000. Um, items can be sold for a limited time or around special occasions or you can set aside a, per, a certain percentage of sales and designate them as donations. Um, the daughter of past president Travis created and sold um, MDG inspired bracelets for $20, raising $1,700 and becoming the top fundraiser worldwide for JCI in 2012. And my son, Aaron, started a fundraising campaign selling nothing but nuts and um, JCI USA themed dog tags. Um, and he raised $2,500 in 2013 being the top fundraiser for the for JCI as a whole. Um, donating your birthday. Each year, JCs around the world, including um, past world president last year, Kiara, um, donated their birthdays, collecting donations instead of gifts. Um, it says on here your CrowdRise page, you've actually slipped to Team Razor. Some people are still using CrowdRise. It's a great tool to put out there for your birthday celebration, and people can donate right on your page for the credit card. Um, it is tax deductible, so as people are donating, they will get the receipt um, for tax deduction as well. We also have started the Mosquito Marathon. Uh, Mosquito Marathon was set up as a walkathon, so individual members could get involved and participate. Our goal is to walk the 9,575 miles from our headquarters in St. Louis to Madagascar, where we deliver nets in 2013. The way to get involved in the marathon is to fill out the form on usjcs.org, pledging how many miles you will walk. Submit your $10 for your t-shirt and pedometer, so you do get a Mosquito Marathon and a um, t-shirt and a pedometer so you can track your miles. Um, you can submit that $10 at jcmember.com. Get people to pledge the, the miles that you're walking at $10 a mile. And we've had members who have had folks pledge in different ways. Um, so we had one member have 20 people pledge 50 cents a mile, or 10 people pledge $1 a mile. Or some have just had folks pledge $10 a mile, but only pledge two or three miles out of the miles they're walking. Um, we have members, some that are walking 10 miles, some 25. We have one member who's pledged to walk 300 miles. Um, this walk started on January 1st, and everybody has until April 25th, which is World Malaria Day, um, to walk the number of miles that you have pledged to walk. And then you turn in all your collected monies by April 30th, um, either through the CrowdRise page um, so we do have a Mosquito Marathon CrowdRise page, or you can send a check into headquarters, um, and they'll put it in the CrowdRise page. And that's USJC headquarters. Some chapter fundraising ideas that we've seen in the past um, using the Nets idea. Um, as it talked about previously, the basketball tournaments, three-on-three, three, or of course, volleyball tournaments. We had a big volleyball tournament in Jacksonville, Florida last year that raised over $1,400. Um, soccer tournaments, um, anything along those lines have worked out really, really well. And we had a kickball tournament last year in Central Park, and we also had a kickball tournament um, in Pennsylvania. Both of them were great fundraisers. I'm running a raffle, a DJ, a DJ bingo tournament, a rock, paper, scissors tournament, a yard sale, a car wash, coordinating with a local restaurant for a JC night, hosting a 5K walk, a bake sale. Um, we've had a duck race, as in plastic duck race. Um, which went over really, really well. And some folks were doing food sales at festivals. So any idea you can think of is a wonderful and amazing idea. And any money raised saves lives. Spread the buzz. Um, using social media, emails, letters, newsletters, community forums, flyers, anything you can think of, sharing photos, stories, and fundraisers, events, and other actions you've taken to end malaria. Um, here's some nothing but nuts talking points. Um, you can use these to remember malaria kills every 60 seconds, a child dies from malaria, no child should die from a preventable disease, bed nets save lives, it's easy to help, $10 can send a net save a life, 200 million cases of malaria each year and more than 600,000 of these infected die from the disease, mostly in Africa. Um, just a ton of others, about children under five are the greatest risk, according to, for more than, accounting for more than 90% of deaths from malaria. So just some really good talking points and factors that you can share with individuals of how important it is um, to send a net and save a life. I know um, I went to the Partnership Summit in 2012 before I was president, um, just coming in to get ready to be president in 2013, 
um, of USJCs and the campaign that really stuck in my heart is that your child, I taught my child to give so that your child could live. So just how important it is and how simple it is to send $10, give $10 to send a net and save a life. Media outreach. You can also use local media to spread the buzz. Here are some tips on getting your local media to help you in the fight against malaria. Um, reach out to your local media writing a letter to the editor. Um, huge thing, just getting information out to people. Um, write about nothing but nuts campaign, the fight against malaria. Keep these tips in mind. Be brief and stick to one key message. If responding to a recent news article, previ previous letter, editorial, or news event, reference it by date and headline. Um, follow with a background sentence or two. Use fact or figure to back up your position if possible. For relevant facts about malaria, visit the Nothing But Nuts website or also um, the toolkit. Um, respect the position or the issue of the opponent that you're sending the letter to. And include your name, address, email, and phone number so that they can reach out to you for further information. And some do have specific policies for submission, so you want to make sure that you have all the information that you need to have on there. Writing a press release for your event. Um, so once you have your event planned for Nothing But Nuts, making sure you get that press release out there. Um, check the website of your local paper, radio station, or television. I can tell you when we were traveling in the bus tour last year, um, we did 40 media events, and that was from radio to TV to newspaper, um, national television, and um, national newspaper. So it was just um, magazines, we were in magazines last year. So people really want to hear the story, they want to hear what you're doing, they want to hear why you're doing it, so that's really, really important to get that information out there. Um, event and host attendees, um, so you know, make sure you're telling that, the topic and the purpose, why it's important, the location, the RSVP information, the date and time. Um, here are some more helpful tips for media outreach. Issue a media alert and or press release at least one to two weeks before your event. Send out the alert or release to select reporters covering global health or local journalists that may be interested. So make sure you're reaching out to the right people to get the information in their hands. Provide contact information for reporters to follow up for more information. Follow up with reporters as the day of the event approaches by phone. Monitor the media interest. So compile a list of reporters who express interest in covering the report. And make note of any interview requests that they have. Um, designate one contact that the media can reach out to on the day of the event. And after the event, um, make sure that you track any print or online articles published by the reporters that attended the event so you have all of that information and the type of media that you're receiving. Social media is also a great way to spread the buzz about malaria. And here's some examples that you can use to spread the buzz. Um, Twitter. Here's a lot of Twitter. Um, the big thing is that the relative hashtags that we use are NBN Buzz Tour 2.0. Um, so we'll be starting Buzz Tour 2.0 this summer. Hashtag Malaria Monday. Um, every once, at least once a month, sometimes twice a month on a Monday, um, I'll do a hashtag Malaria Monday where we share information about malaria and I issue a challenge, either signing up for Mosquito Marathon. We just finished up the Nothing But Nets March Madness bracket competition, so that was out there. Um, we just released a 10-minute educational video that you can share with your chapters. Um, that Carolyn from Nothing But Nuts did. Um, she's our partnership liaison. Um, so we put a, a challenge out there to watch the video and answer a question or to post a malaria fact on your Facebook page or share our page, um, share the video. Um, so that happens and we do send out swag, whether it be t-shirts or backpacks or wristbands or ink pens or something we send out to individuals who participate in these types of things um, so they can get something um, for participating in Hashtag Malaria Monday. Um, hashtag malaria, hashtag spread the buzz, hashtag end malaria, those are all really important things. Um, this again came from the toolkit, so they did a lot about the buzz tour and now it'll be buzz tour 2.0. Facebook, um, malaria kills, nets save lives this summer, we're helping nothing but nets spread the buzz about this disease on cross country buzz tour 2.0. Um, the big one is just, I just participated in an event, fundraiser, governmental meeting. Um, so when you're attending meetings with your government officials, taking pictures and put, posting those on Facebook and Twitter are really important. And tagging the individual that you were with, whether it was their, somebody from their staff or the actual member of Congress themselves, just posting that information because they do 
um, put that information out that they're being supportive and they retweet it or they reshare it on Facebook. So that's very, very important stuff to be putting out there as you're continually pushing the importance and being a malaria champion. Um, Buzz Tour 2.0. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Buzz Tour, the first one. Um, so I'll give you a really quick overview. Um, we started working, like I said, with Nothing But Nuts, and we really got on board with them um, in 2012. Um, so at World Congress in Taipei, we sat down um, with the director, Chris, and had a conversation about how we become more actively involved in advocacy and getting the information out there to our members of Congress. In this discussion, we decided that we would take a 17-state road trip. So me as national president and the first family, my husband and my son, um, got on the road and went to 17 different states, visiting 85 of our chapters um, and 60 governmental visits um, discussing the importance of Nothing But Nuts, our partnership, and also the importance and relevance of the JCs and how we can participate them with them in other programs, including Nothing But Nuts. So it was an amazing summer trip. We were on the road for 72 days um, doing all of these visits. And with that being said, Nothing But Nuts was so very, very happy with us and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation as well. And they asked us to participate in Buzz for 2.0. Um, with President Faye's schedule, she asked if me, as the immediate past president and my family, would do the tour again. And she would join us on the West Coast leg um, at the end of the tour. So we will be taking off again um, starting the beginning of June traveling all the way until August the 21st, um, so almost 90 days on the road, um, participating with our chapters again. So our goal is to visit 100 chapters, we're hoping, um, 75 to 100. And our goal is to do 150 governmental visits. So the, this year, the states we're visiting will be Tennessee, Kentucky, Virginia, Connecticut, Massachusetts, D.C. We'll be in Maryland for the annual meeting in Baltimore. Um, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, Washington, California, and then President Faye will leave us and go out to Hawaii and do her visit there and visit her governmental officials. Um, so we're very excited about Buzz for 2.0. We can't wait to get started again. Um, it's very important to our organization of visiting chapters and getting the opportunity to see what people are doing in their hometowns. Um, but also having our chapter members sit down with their government officials and talk about why JCs are important, why our partnership with Nothing But Nuts is important, and how we work together to be active citizens. The biggest thing, and my, my mantra for last year, was turning your passion into action. And the success of Nothing But Nuts is a testament to the power of passionate people. Coming together to make the world a better, healthier place, you can protect a family, your church, your school, or sports team can protect the community. Your chapter can protect the community. And together, we can cover Africa and other countries in need with life-saving bed nets. Do you have any questions? Okay, perfect. What are your questions?
While you're typing your questions, Frank, I will say that Nothing But Nuts has been an amazing partner for us. Um, Media-wise, they're wonderful. They have worked hand-in-hand -in -hand with us to get us in front of our members of Congress, which is wonderful that we can sit down and have conversations with them about being active citizens and how we can work on some of the initiatives that they have going on as well. So having somebody in an organization that we can work with that kind of opens up the door for us has been fantastic. And like I said, media-wise, the USJCs were all over the news. Um, we were traveling and visiting with chapters and got them in the media as well. So it's been a really cool opportunity for us. Um, a suggestion for continuing to fundraise throughout the year is, I don't know if you want to do stuff like at your meetings or if you actually want to host like a fundraiser. I mean, we've had chapters do so many different things. Um, we have a partnership with Go Kickball, um, so I mentioned kickball tournaments. Um, so we've had chapters get involved with that and host like tournaments. Um, we've had chapters do stuff as simple, like I said, as hosting a raffle or a 50-50 drawing during your chapter meetings. Um, so that's the way for, you know, a chapter, you only have them pay $5 to be a part of this drawing. And somebody could win half of the money, potentially most people give it back. And even though you're only raising a bed net for every two people, at least you're doing this and maybe you do it once a quarter. Um, it's really cool that you've already hosted a fundraiser through CrowdRise, so that's super awesome. Um, and that you've already almost reached your goal of, um, you know, one net per member, which is what we're asking chapters to do. So that that is super cool. Um, but any anything, like, I think the more creative and the more out of the box that you're thinking, the more excited people get and they want to be involved. Like I mentioned, that rock, paper, scissors tournament, we were like, really, adults are going to be doing this? And we were thinking how crazy it was. But they raised $750. I mean, they had it in a restaurant-type bar atmosphere. Um, young people were there. People had just gotten off of work. People had just gotten out of sporting events. And they came and they played. They paid $10 and they played. And, and the winner got these prizes that were donated, uh, $25 gift cards to restaurants and those types of things. But I don't think they cared much about the prizes, just being able to say they were the one who won the tournament. And so it was a lot of fun. I have the rules if you want me to email them to you. Um, but just thinking of really crazy, creative things, and it gets people inspired and involved and they want to participate. So out-of-the-box thinking, I think, is the most best way to go with the, the creativity with fundraising. Did you have any other questions? We found actually the best way to gain support from congressmen is actually calling their office. Um, just calling the, the in-district office is the easiest because it's close usually to where you live, um, and reaching out to them and asking if you can sit down with them. And even if you don't sit down with the actual congressman or senator, but you sit down with their staff, that is just as valuable because the staff is the one who's going out and doing things in that local community. So having those conversations with them and the staff will know what is the initiatives of the senator or congressman. What do they have that they're working on right now that JCs as a whole could get involved in? And I'll tell you how incredible it is to see the surprise look on their face when you're asking if you can help them instead of how they can help you. I mean, it is invaluable. I mean, letters are great, but my only worry with the letter is sometimes we send them and we don't know if there's any action that's taken or if it does get to the senator or congressperson. We don't know. Whereas sitting down and having a meeting, even if it's with staff, you know that information is being passed along. And you can bring them in stuff about your JC chapter, whether it be a newsletter or a flyer, talking about who you are, and then sharing the information. And like I said, we view nothing but nuts as a, a door opener for us. 
absolutely. Sometimes those letters are gone and nobody knows who they went to or what happened. Whereas when you're picking up that phone and you're calling somebody, you know that you're getting another person on the other end. And they've been fantastic about setting up meetings with us. We, we did not have anybody tell us no. So they want to hear from you. You are a voter. It's important that they talk to you and hear what you're passionate about. And we didn't have anyone be negative to us either. You know, like, why are we talking about this? How is this affecting us? Um, we made the ask and the ask about them joining the Malaria Caucus, and we really just said, how can we help you? What do you have going on right now? What's important issues in our state, in our city, in our community that the JC should be involved in, and, and how do we be the most active citizens? You'd be surprised, too, what you learn from them. And, and I would invite, if you have big events coming up where there's going to be lots of people, um, I would invite your senator or congressman and ask them to participate in the event. We've had lots of chapters that we've told to host um, town hall meetings. So having a town hall meeting and talk about things that are important to your community, whether it be poverty or education, or maybe there's a big hot issue that's happening in your community right now, and invite the senator and congress people to come out and have those conversations. Invite your local mayor, invite you know your city manager or whoever is in your community to come out and talk about what's happening in our community, why is it important, and how do people get involved. And I mean that's a really cool way too to kind of get the message out there of what you're working on as a JC chapter and what you can do to, to be a, a, an integral part of the city. Any other questions? Um, that's where I would use some of those talking points. I mean, the biggest thing for us, when we were traveling, we got that sometimes on the radio as well. Um, we had someone kind of come at us and say, why is this important to us? It's happening in Africa or South America. Um, the biggest thing is talking about it doesn't just happen there. We send our troops there. We send Doctors Without Borders there. We send individuals who are vacationing there, who are getting their education there, who are interning there. And all of those individuals could come back with a sickness and bring it here within minutes. Um, we thought we had a scare within the last year of somebody returning from Africa, coming into Virginia, and they came in with malaria. So this is not completely out of the realm of our reality. We just don't think about it because we're not watching our friends pass away from malaria. So talking to them about how quickly it could come back to the U.S. if we don't nip it in the bud. We have people traveling to Africa consistently. And then we talked about earlier in the presentation about production. Um, when production's down in Africa, anything that we purchase from there means that we may or may not get it or we're going to get it later, those types of things. So um, sharing that kind of discussion with them and saying it seems like it's so far away because you're not talking about it here every day or watching somebody die from malaria, but it's still affecting us consistently. Yeah, we spent a lot of time, you know, kind of talking to individuals about stuff like that. We, and when we were talking with some of the government officials, some of them were even telling us stories about being in Africa and having to take them anti-malaria medicine. And one lady had told us about a movie, which we still haven't had the time to watch. We've been traveling like crazy, but um, about a young lady who took her son over there as a baby um, to participate and get culture before he turned five to take him to school. And while over there, he contracted malaria, and they couldn't save his life. And so she's been lobbying on Capitol Hill consistently talking about how important it is to share this with individuals who are traveling who think, well, you know, we're from the U.S., so we're invincible, and have that type of attitude. And she could have brought that back here if they would not have discovered it while she was there. So, yeah, very important things to share that people don't think about because they're just not hearing about it every day here in the U.S. Any other questions?
Absolutely. Um, if you can just type in your email address, I'll send you the presentation right now. And most certainly, um, it has my, it'll have my email, of course, sending it to you, but it has my phone number on there as well. Um, so keep in contact. We're always available for ideas. And then also, I'll put in the link where you can go directly to the um, toolkit. So there's loads of more information on there as well. And you can um, get into the toolkit and look at it. And, you know, there's more talking points and things that you can share with people as well. But I truly appreciate you being on the webinar tonight. And I thank you very much. And um, most certainly keep in contact. And if you have further questions as you start reading the material and if you need more ideas or what have you, please, please keep in touch. And, and we will most certainly, you know, give you any information that you need or be there if you, if you have any questions. Perfect. I will send this over to you right now. Um, let me know if you need anything else. And uh, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Awesome. Well, you have a great evening, and um, I will talk to you soon.